the heaviest land animal on Earth. Because it, I don't think that that last part's necessary. The largest and heaviest land animal. Right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> it's like ATM machine. But aren't we <laughs> you know? the HIV virus? Yeah. <laughs> but aren't we always discovering new things on other planets? Not land animals. Do we know that for sure? I... We haven't discovered any Saturnian elephants or no. anything like that. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. P- point taken. Uh, that leaves the elephants at the zoo all females. Willie was the one male. Oh, no. And these females, as you might have guessed, really tired. So um, Willie the elephant is gone. Also, I think an institution can be considered a celebrity death. It's been closed for a minute, but they're finally going to uh, tear down... They're going to demolish the Lido Lounge for the worst possible reason. They're going to put a Bank of America location there. Another bank branch. Well, I guess I didn't realize how many people... Listen, there are a lot of businesses that are cash only, you know, like retail and if you're working in the service. And there's a lot of cash deposits, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that probably explains why they're still putting bank branches up. People because like not everybody's not everybody's <laughs> Venmoing and things like it's like cell phone stores. If it's not a bank branch going up, they're building another cell phone store. Because there's a lot of people that still need to walk in. You know, it's not just your grandparents. There's a lot of people that still need to walk in a store and conduct their business. So the Lido Lounge, which has been closed for a minute now, last year it got sold. And those people had owned it for 50 years. And so uh, the Lido Lounge, which, listen, responsible for a lot of great memories for a lot of people. I only went there one time for Cody Cooper's bachelor party. Mm-hmm. And it was not much of a strip club guy. Did you, <laughs> did you get that out? One, that, that, that may, that's, I've been to a strip club one time since then. But it's, yeah. You made it out unscathed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the Lido Lounge, as long as it was there and as many in, food. indelible <laughs> memories, it's no way to refer to the girls, Bill, as many indelible memories as people had there, it was really, um, it was a landmark. You had to give them credit for maintaining the Lido Lounge sign and never turning the logo into like a boob or a leg, or a tassel, just a giant L. I'm sorry, I missed the part when you said, I heard it was being demolished, but why? It's, it's, it's been sold. It's been there. sold, and they're going to they're gonna erect a Bank of America branch there. Okay. So are they not My doing, neighborhood's falling apart. Are they not doing good business, by the way? Like, well, the Lido Lounge has been closed for a while. They sold it. Okay. Yeah, so it, n- nobody's been. Now, do those girls go find employment elsewhere? Do they go to another club, or do they just get out of the business? Depends. I mean, Lido Lounge, known for a lot of things. The girls, lovely, depending on when you went. Uh, if you didn't mind, uh, you know, cigarette burns, C-section scars. Stab wounds. All the hits. Some fresh. See, the, the night that I was there, I didn't see the, the stab wounds or anything like that. That's they what you were go just, for. They were just so young. They're just 18-year-old, and I'm just like, Ugh. They're women, Bill. They're striking out on their own. Yeah. They're independent young ladies. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this show's going to hell. <laughs> independent young ladies. All the women, women. And uh, finally who I consider the third celebrity to die, is Kevin Mitnick, who you guys probably have no idea who that is. Oh, we all know him. Yeah, old Mitnicks. Who's Kevin Mitnick? He was a Russian baseball player in the 30s. A Russian guy named Kevin Mitnick. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, nailed it. Very good at history. He played for the Moscow Meteors. Uh. Mules, yes. (laughs) Uh, Hello. He was a drummer on an opening band. No. Kevin Mitnick, 
Can you? Was he I think a, you got to be a Gen Xer to get this. Was he a uh, film star? No. Kevin Mitnick was the first guy I ever recall uh, getting arrested for being a hacker. He was the world's most wanted hacker back in the day. He passed away at age 59. His wife is currently pregnant, so he never even got to meet his first kid. He had pancreatic cancer, and he had been fighting that. But back in the 80s, when, like, those early days of hacking, there were movies about it. There was Matthew Broderick and War Games and Ferris Bueller was hacking into his school records, and you had, you know, when you had the- Hackers in the 90s where they're rollerblading around. There you go. But in the 80s, like, they had the handset on the modem and yeah. weird science, those guys. So all the nerds, and Kevin Mitnick was the guy who was, like, he was the guy. Handset on the modem is wild. I actually just watched War Games last week, and it, like- Is Lithgow the guy in that, the, the other dude? Who's no, the- um- Who's the bad guy in war games? Um, Shall we play a game? Humans. That's right. And also a computer. But Kevin Mitnick was 12 years old, and he it, it was kind of, he didn't, there was nothing to hack into with this, but he figured out the way that the L.A. public transportation system was timed out. So he was. Oh, I remember me- hearing about that. He was memorizing bus schedules and punch cards. And then he bought his own tools so he could, like, fake the punch cards and just ride buses all day long, which sounds silly, but he was 12 at the time. So this was a guy back in the day, mid-'80s. He first hacked a computer in the late 70s, and then in the mid-'80s, he broke into, like, there used to be a company called Pacific Bell before all the phone companies got deregulated. Pacific Bell, he hacked into their computers— and then he was hacking into some of the first cell networks, and he was hacking into credit card companies, and he's like, I never took anybody's money. He just wanted to get in and look around. Well, he eventually got arrested, and they put him in jail. He did about a year and a half in prison. Sorry, he did five years in prison. First time they threw him in, I think he just got like a year, but then they grabbed him again because they threw charges at him that he was trying to sell corporate secrets. That's how you got those guys, right? Is you were like, oh, well, you were trying to steal their information. And so they put him in prison for five years. But when he got out, he became what they call a white hat hacker, which was companies would hire him to find out where the whole, like, this is what my son does now. He does cybersecurity. And so a guy like Kevin Mitnick back in the day, because like my dad was an engineer and a computer guy. My dad was always like, building new programs and creating these things for, you know. And so I was fascinated by it. I didn't have the brain for that. I remember when Kevin Mitnick, when that whole thing was happening, and I was like, boy, that sounds cool. I'd love to know how to do that. I just don't have the brain for it. Fortunately, my son does. Uh, my dad did. But I, I just never had the brain for it. But I was fascinated by it. And Kevin Mitnick was like the guy. He was the dude at a very young age that wannabe hackers like looked up to so for a while late 80s early 90s he was like a very well-known name dabney coleman was mckittrick and then john wood was falcon i love dabney coleman he's great he's been dead for a while right i don't think he's dead or maybe he died not that long ago because uh he he's alive he's 91 wow Dabney he, Coleman. He was in Yellowstone. He's great. Oh, was he really? Yeah, one episode in 2019. He was in 9 to 5 back in the day. Wasn't he the boss? That's what I remember him in. He was the guy that they tie up? Yeah. And then he was in, yeah, like the 80s. He was in um, Tootsie and, yeah, War Games. Anyway, um, you if you're my age, if you're a Gen Xer, you'll remember Kevin Mitnick, but he died at 59. Uh, pancreatic cancer, his wife's pregnant. Didn't get to meet his kid. One of my favorite authors, Ruth Ware, she writes The Figure Amounts. Uh, her latest book called Zero Days that literally just came out is about hackers like this. Oh, it's yeah? The main character and her husband are, um, they call them pen testers, which is a penetration tester yep. for her yeah. business. Yeah. But, like, she, uh, they test the security. That's their job. Her yes. husband mm-hmm. is on the computer side, and he tries to hack in um, like to the systems and override things, and she would be physically breaking into these places. 
and that was like the whole basis of their job is testing secure like people would hire them tech companies and things like that and they're like find everything we screwed up on right and they're um, like instead of you trying to get into our systems we'll pay you to show us where exactly the soft spots are yeah yeah that's it's just so crazy because i had never heard of that before and then i read that book like a week ago and then now this guy died they call it ethical hacking these days called used pen to be testing black in, hat white hat yeah in uh in the book but that's also based in london so let me give you some uh, money here. It's $1,000, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Hey, Brad. Alan, first-time caller. Hey, thank you. What's up? That Bank of America... 100% is going to get robbed. Why? But because it's on 116th? Because of the location, no, I, you mean? I, so I, I used to location. I used to work over there behind the Giant Eagle. Um, I was just recently, I was actually just there today. Uh, the gecko right across the street. Front doors are made of plywood. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, so I mean, um, I, you know, I would imagine if it's a bank branch, they're going to have better security than a get go. You would think so, but Gitgo had a security guard in there as well that I've never seen before. So, yeah. Well, um, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It was. I'm in, sure. Um, well, I mean, everything gets like like that. Giant Eagle has had a lot of problems. That Target's had a lot, a of, lot problems. of problems. And that's why. But I it's also because it's right by the highway because they can so they can do it and then just easy. get the hell out of there. Yeah, I was just so in. They're, I they're was. Asking, I was in that. I was in that 117th target this morning for a couple of minutes. And, yeah, it's a little touch and go, but, I mean, um, whatever. Um, well, we're going to find we'll, out, Brad, right? I mean, if they we'll, – uh, we'll find out. Grand opening, grand closing. Yeah, we'll find out. Knows. They're going to get robbed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, soon-to-be former Lido Lounge there at uh, 117th and whatever it is. What's the intersection there? Western okay. Avenue, is that what it is? I don't think there is one. Is there? No. Yeah, it's like it's not right in the corner, but it's closest, I think. It's it's farther north yeah, than the get go and you know. As you head um, closer to Berea Road right there. That's my hood though. You're right in the lake. That's not your hood. I mean that's like my target and everything. It's, oh, that's, that's your like, target? It's like a mile away from my house. Hmm. It's like two miles. You go straight down one seventeenth? Yep. Hmm, okay. Well, there you go. Two miles. Two Thanks, miles. I was going to say, because it's like a mile and a half away from me. And I'm me and Bill are close, but so far away. Like, we are in. Is your new place? No, no, no. I'm oh, talking your about own now. place. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's you, different worlds. You, you say, <laughs> it is, mm. It's literally like you cross, you cross like a railroad track or go under a bridge and all mm-hmm. the, the grass changes. <laughs> yeah, like, there is grass. You, right. It goes from green to tan. Mm-hmm. Like, mine's like the dark green grass, but it has, like, the little uh, weeds on it, the the little dandelions, or the, what's the white dandelions? Those are dandelions. Oh, those dandelions. are dandelions. Yeah, different stage of its development. Okay. <laughs> you go from yellow to white. They're, mine are all white. A little earlier in the life cycle. All right. But you're going to be close. But you're moving closer to Bill. I know. Yeah, yeah. you're going to be right around the corner from me. You can be over for those. Uh, you guys are going to be right in the middle of the that Detroit Avenue chicken wars over there, right? What do you mean chicken wars? Well, they got a Dave's Hot right next to Raising Cane's. I had that the other day. Oh, you know. that's been, Those have been there for a minute, though. But I'm not Yeah, cheating. but th- it's East Coast, West Coast. <laughs> I don't. They got a chicken turf war. I don't like I cheating miss Guthrie's. on chick. I, I was just talking about that, too. In the steel yard? Yeah. That place was good. I can't believe they, that wasn't doing well. I know. They just never had the hype that these other places had. Where, in Lakewood? There's a, the no, Steel Yard's Gu- still open. Gu- Guthrie's isn't it's open. It's gone. It's yeah, gone. it is. There's a, no, no, it's not. I was just in Steel Yard the other day. I was at that uh, Target, and it's not there anymore. I looked for it because I wanted it. Huh. I thought it still was. But no, that Dave's Hot Chicken, boy, that ain't nothing to play with. Their sauce and their the way they batter their chicken, oh, my God. I don't know if I've had a competitor with Chick-fil-A, but... It ain't Popeyes and it ain't Canes, but Dave's is a close second. Huh. I prefer hot chicken takeover. I think that's the spot. I don't think I've had that. Yeah. Uh they have those in Columbus. They're good. There's one across. I like the the hot uh 
But Dave's Hot is pretty good. To your point, I mean, they're all good. They're all it's just yeah, they're all good. It's hot chicken. It's chicken. I was gonna say to your point, you keep saying that there's only so many ways you could do chicken. Apparently not, because they keep finding new ways. No, they don't. They just just they go. Hey, here's our sauce. It's the sauce. It's not the chicken. There's a boat jangles on the way here too. The Dave's Hot Chicken is a different. It 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 tastes different. Like they're well, they got a different spice to it. Yeah, Um, they are putting a bunch of uh, bojangles here. You know what's the most underrated chicken in the city? Fusaklis. Uh No. <laughs> they have Fusaklis here? <laughs> the Giant Eagles fried chicken is incredible. Pancake, you got to get your mom off of that uh, Walmart chicken She'll and get her on the Giant it. Eagle. I got her to get on the highway once, and it wasn't even because of me. So you think I'm going to rip out her pride and have her not have any Walmart chicken? Oh, you mean you don't want to give her too much to handle all at once? She, she wouldn't be able to process it. Hmm. Too much change for her. But if you tell her that at the end of that highway is a brand new kind of chicken that she might really enjoy, it might be something to get her back on the highway. I think, but I, to her credit, I think she has tried all the other chickens. She she got the chickens at Drug Mart, which Drug Mart, I thought their tri- their chicken was really good. I didn't even know they had rotisserie chickens at Not Drug all Mart. of them do, but some of the them one did. In the the one Independence did, yeah. I was like, wow. And those were good. Was, I like those. Saying. It was like slowly like simmered in the little thing all day. That's yeah, like, a rotisserie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> one, of the, one of the first. Um, that's how they're all cooked. I, but theirs were better. There, theirs was good, but uh, they said fried just, chicken's different than a rotisserie chicken. My mom yeah. said Giant so, Eagle's chicken was not as good as Walmart's. But, but that's a rotisserie. Chicken. I'm talking about the fried chicken yeah. at Giant Eagle. It's very good. One of the first national ads I ever got was for a place called Zaxby's. If you've oh, been down yeah. south, Zaxby's. if you go through Atlanta, if you go through Florida, a chain called Zaxby's. And the, the copy was always really annoying because they would call all of their items, they would spell them with a Z. Mm. So they'd be like, stop at a Zaxby's for salads and zappetizers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not easy to say. What's zapping? <laughs> What's zapping at Zaxby's? But I don't think they have those up here. They're in Georgia and Florida. And the, but the Zax family packs. You got a lot of people in your crew. Make sure you know. Get a pizza and a salad. Bring your zaddy. <laughs> your zaddy. Take your zaddy to Zaxby's. <laughs> All right, I got a break. Our, that's their Pride Month campaign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>